This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. School is canceled in Mount Horeb, where a would-be school shooter put the community on high alert Wednesday. School Superintendent Steve Salerno credits the community for keeping middle schoolers safe during yesterday's active shooter crisis. Had it not been for our community stepping up to the plate to help support capital and operational referendums that allowed us to install um, safety measures, um, including vestibules, uh, locked front doors and the like, Um, This could have been a far worse tragedy. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call. We currently believe that there is no ongoing threat to public safety. Um, But again, this is an ongoing investigation, and we will update the public if any additional threat to safety is discovered. Law enforcement shot and killed the shooter who was reported to be a student at school. Amtrak will start a second passenger train route between St. Paul and Chicago later this month. The Borealis trains begin service on the 21st. The new trains follow the current Empire Builder route between St. Paul and Milwaukee and the Hiawatha stops between Milwaukee and Chicago. There will be eight stops in Wisconsin. Donald Trump gave an extended defense of his approach to abortion during a campaign rally in Waukesha yesterday. He maintains his true aim is to take the issue away from Washington. We brought it back into the states where it has to be, and over a period of time that works out, and it's taken a lot of the controversy out, and it's been a good thing. And you also have to remember, as a politician, you also have to get elected. Some activists say they're disappointed Trump isn't endorsing a nationwide abortion ban. The U.S. House this week passed a bill to remove the gray wolf from the endangered species list. It now goes to the Senate. If the bill becomes law, Wisconsin would bring back its wolf hunting and trapping season. Wisconsin has about a thousand wolves. Wisconsin's fishing opener is Saturday. The Department of Natural Resources is warning fishers not to recycle their old fishing lines in their regular recycling. Instead, the DNR recommends bagging old fishing line and taking it to a special fishing line collection center. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. A group of pro-Palestine protesters set up a camp outside of Duluth City Hall on Wednesday. According to a Northern News Now report, the protests started around 2 p.m. outside the Duluth Public Library and stopped by a number of businesses like Wells Fargo to call on them to divest from Israel. A statement from the group said they, quote, refused to accept our government's complicity in the genocide and occupation of Palestine. Duluth officials said they respect the group's free speech rights and there was no concern for public safety. As Wisconsinites prepare for the start of inland fishing season on Saturday, the Department of Natural Resources is reminding anglers to properly dispose of their fishing lines and avoid using lead weights. Officials say improperly disposed fishing lines can get a fish tangled up by its gills, and swallowing a lead weight could be fatal for them. Anglers who still intend on using lead weights should not dispose of them in the trash or water, but should check with their local recycling programs to see if they'll take them. After weeks of question marks for students, faculty, and area residents, Northland College has announced it will remain open under a new model. In March, the school announced that it needed to raise $12 million by early April to remain open, which it failed to do. Nonetheless, officials and faculty continued to fundraise and restructured the curriculum to solve their budget issues. Under its new model, the school will offer eight high-demand majors and continue to pursue potential new revenue sources. The Family Freedom Center in Duluth will receive half a million dollars in grant funding over the next five years. According to a Northern News Now report, the center plans to ask for guidance from the community on where to best spend the money from the Community Opportunity Fund grant, but some early ideas include using the money for renovations at the site or even moving to a new space entirely. The Hillside Neighborhood Center currently serves about 300 area children and over 500 families. Construction on a seawall behind the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center is proceeding nicely. According to a WDIO report, the warmer-than-usual winter has allowed crews more time to work on the $19 million project. Officials say they plan on finishing most of the construction by the end of the year and will also be dredging the harbor in the fall. When the project is complete, it will include a cruise ship terminal and plaza space for visitors, while also providing more protection from flooding in the area. 
The Duluth Police Department has announced the arrest of a suspect in connection to an interesting string of vandalism. According to law enforcement officials, a 22-year-old man was arrested on property damage charges after allegedly spray-painting the word plunger in various places throughout the city. Officials also say that because the extent of the property damage exceeded $1,000, the suspect will be charged with a felony instead of a misdemeanor. Police did not reveal the identity of the person they arrested. Some Barron County residents are receiving storm spotting training from the National Weather Service. According to a WEAU report, the trainees are taught how to track clouds and their movements to confirm if a tornado has hit the ground. Officials say that having trained eyes on the ground could help them identify potential instances of violent weather that could be missed if they rely solely on technology. They say while many people are interested in the training, it's difficult to coordinate with people's normal work schedules. The Damiano Center has announced its shower facility is now open to the public. According to a Fox 21 report, the center's hygiene unit has six different spaces, each with a shower, sink, and toilet. Guests can use the hygiene unit to shower on weekdays between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Each unit has soap, shampoo, and conditioner, as well as a fresh towel and washcloth. The organization hopes to provide a safe and secure place for people to clean themselves up. The hygiene unit will be open for guests through October. And that's what you need to know. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers head to Chicago. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers have the day off before facing the Cubs tomorrow at Wrigley Field. Milwaukee with a half-game lead over Chicago. The Brewers' Willie Adamas with three home runs and eight RBI in just the last two days on how his team is in first place when no one thought they'd be this good. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, you know, we always been battling the whole year. Uh, we never give up, and I, th- I, I guess that tells you, you know, how good how, how good of a team we are. You know, we always playing hard, you know, battling, and, you know, just trying to win some games. And uh, for us to bounce back after that Yankees series I think it was huge you know now going on the road uh, facing the Cubs you know hopefully we can you know go there and, and do the same thing NBA game six the Bucks down three games to two to the Pacers tonight in Indy Dame and Giannis doubtful again Chris Middleton asked about the defensive game plan they had in Tuesday night's victory I thought it was great you know guys you know they were fighting um, I was fighting down low like you said Bees was you know Pat Bev Pat Connaughton everybody was Brooke did a great job you know hanging on the perimeter at times and um, I thought we played with a lot of pride on the defensive side you know that set the tone for us throughout the game doc rivers on how chris middleton has performed he's been amazing chris was on both ends played a lot of minutes uh wanted to stay in uh he gave us everything that's the bucks doc rivers with sports i'm mike clemens on your entertainment beat i'm pete schwaba here's a schwaba mendation about a truly great american he can juggle play the banjo and has made you laugh with stand-up comedy or movies over his long career I'm talking about, of course, Steve Martin, and highly recommend Apple TV's Steve Martin, a documentary in two pieces. It covers Martin's obsession with TV comedy idols as a child all the way through his mega fame as an actor. It's definitely worth a look. So what do you do when you've had multiple sexual assault allegations thrown at you? You put your hair in a man bun and get baptized in the River Thames. At least that's what Russell Brand did. Brand was accused last September of assaulting four women over the course of seven years between 2006 and 2013. The New York Post reports that the 48-year-old father of three and former husband to Katy Perry says he is learning from his mistakes and happy to be surrendered to Christ, which, let's be honest, takes less guts than surrendering to authorities. Benson and Stabler still haven't kissed, much to the dismay of fans, but viewers might get their wish. The two staples of the Dick Wolf Law & Order franchise have teased fans for the better part of two decades regarding their unrequited romance. Mariska Hardigay says they almost kissed on season 24 in an episode of SVU, but the show's producers bailed at the last minute. When the actors saw that there was nothing written kiss-wise in season 25, they were surprised. Chris Maloney's character, Elliot Stabler, left SVU after 12 years. Now he heads up the cast of the show Law & Order Organized Crime, where there has been lots of crossover with SVU. Hargitay says it still might happen, but they want to hold the tension and do what is realistic for the characters, hinting that fans should not give up yet. There's always season 26, or 27, or 42. The show will never end. Jerry Seinfeld is accusing the show Friends of stealing his comedy, and his accusations have made their way into his new movie, Unfrosted. The New York Post reports that the 70-year-old comedian is on the promotion trail for the film which he wrote, directed, and stars in. During the film, the CEO of Pop-Tarts asks Seinfeld if he's familiar with trademark infringement or someone stealing your ideas, to which Seinfeld responds, you mean like Friends. Unfrosted also stars Hugh Grant, Amy Schumer, Melissa McCarthy, and Peter Dinklage. Unfrosted hits theaters May 3rd.
Speaking of Seinfeld, Michael Richards, or Kramer, hit the red carpet for the first time in eight years at the Unfrosted premiere earlier this week. Richards has kept a low profile since making racist comments on stage at the Laugh Factory in L.A. in 2006. Richards addresses the incident in a new book he will release in June, which also will include great memories of his time on Seinfeld, and as I understand it, no racist tirades. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to be cloudy today with scattered showers, even a few isolated thunderstorms this afternoon. Some heavy rain possible, too, with a quarter to a half inch or more of rain possible by later this evening. 57 today. Tonight, thunderstorms ending after midnight. 46 the low. Tomorrow, sunshine and warmer with a high of 68. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it's 47. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio.